I've got today is, I don't know how well you can see that. Um, I'm working on a Japanese armor platoon. Yeah. Um, I got a bunch of 3D, 3D printed hot goes and a 3D printed Shiha, but I wanted like a, a nice Warlord resin one. That's kind of my yeah. tank. And then if I'm taking it as a regular platoon, I have like a nicer, nicer. Yeah, makes sense. Um, the Chiha printed really nice. The hot goes are a little rough, so I'm kind of just going real quick on the painting, but this one I'm taking more time on. So just gonna like, I've got some washes on it. It's gonna finish uh, weathering. So some like mud and splatter did, and some chipping. Did you, did you print them? Uh, no, I didn't print them myself. I got a buddy here who's got a printer. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I think just the files for the Huggos were bad because he's done a couple for me that have been like perfect. Like the Chiha is great. Um, he did a, uh, a uh, R35 for my Romanians. It's just like, it just looks great. Um, yeah, look, good thing with 3D printing is you can get some stuff which you can't actually get 28 mil model kits for. Yeah. yeah which is really handy because um, I've got a few 3D printing um, vehicles. Um, I've got some Chev Chevy trucks for my Desert SES, my British SES, mm -hmm. and I've got Uber wagons for my um, German eye as well, which you printed. Yeah. So, like, I mean, and it comes in handy for sure. And like, I mean, another thing is, is like if I want to make a Japanese armor platoon, I don't want to pay, uh, I don't know what it, um, the currency difference, but like $30 for a little resin hot go. Yeah, that's the expensive. That's like twenty five quid, twenty five pounds, man. Okay, roughly. Yeah. So yeah. I paid, I paid about that same amount for these four. Yeah, I know. yeah, I know, I know, I know. Like it, that's what it does me. Like I don't mind, I don't mind paying twenty quid, twenty five quid for the model if in the actual game it's going to actually do something. But paying twenty pound for like a truck model, it's just like. I, I can't get I can't get through that. So that's why three D printing for stuff is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. probably tanks. Yeah, because I've got quite a lot of a kit that I haven't built. But um, I think if I was going to do maybe some of the French tanks, I'm thinking of doing some French tanks, so maybe more French stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd probably go maybe three D printing just so I can get a lot of cheap because they're only small, you no know, useless tanks really. Like yeah. Even the, like the Japanese tanks, not um, in game terms, are not the best. They, but they're good fun. Oh yeah, I mean they're horrible. <laughs> they're horrible tanks. Um, they're horrible. They are, they're rough. The one man turret rule. Their yeah. their one is a, a light anti tank gun, but it's like less than a light anti tank gun. Um, I mean, my I have a thousand point armored list for the Japanese with five tanks, <laughs> two veteran and two squads, and two trucks. Like, like just because of how how bad they are, but I mean, got this one. So this is a, a French R35 for my Romanians, but it's like the same thing. It's it's a little bit better armored, but one man turret, horrible yeah. horrible gun, no machine guns. It's like it's just kind of a, a silly tank to run, but they're fun. I love I love the urban war stuff. I've been um, I've started some char B ones. I am I've already under COVID half an hour. Some uh, French tanks, some char -Bees. can you see it? Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, um, I like the early war tanks, I do, because, like, especially the French and the British stuff, because it's very World War One y sort of still stuff, like. Yeah. So I got three of them to make, which then I can make a tank platoon, and I've got a lot of German tanks, early war tanks, Panzer Ones, Panzer Twos, mm -hmm. so I can have a bit of a big bash there on the table. Because yeah. with the late stuff, you, in a normal tank platoon, you're looking at like two tigers, and then maybe you've got some. You would have squeezed like a, a Panzer three or something, and then that's it. So early war stuff, I think, is a lot more fun, personally. Yeah, but that's that's my plan. When I get around to doing them, because no it's like in a pile of shit. <laughs> so um, I'll be working on some union. Um, command. So I got a Union General. Okay. A pair of binoculars. Yeah. Um, a trumpeter. 
Very nice. And the flag bearer. So these two will be part of a ladder cavalry unit. Mm -hmm. I could split them two off with a captain to make like a command. Depends what game I play, really, because uh, there's a few different systems that I could use them from, like so. So yeah, so. Okay. All right. So uh, I was gonna ask you. I've been thinking all day what to ask you. <laughs> Uh, what got you into war gaming? Like straight away. What first got you into it? Like, well, I um, one second I need to let my dog out. Uh, so I, I'm 28 now, but uh, when I was about 13 or 14 years old. Uh, my buddy introduced me to Warhammer 40k. Yeah. Uh, and I have like, I've built model airplanes and model tanks since I was a kid. Um, so I got into, got into Warhammer, but I lived in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there like wasn't any community for it or anything. No. So I got to mostly build and paint the models, but that was it. <laughs> Um, didn't get to play too much. Uh, the days before social media. Yeah, yeah, way before social media, for sure. So, like, uh, you so you know. Well, I, I mean, my buddy that got me into it lived like forty minutes away, and at fourteen, like, you know, we just didn't even get to see each other that much. So, um, so I, I got into it that way. Uh, I. St <laughs> I don't know, I, it's funny, I started writing uh, like Warhammer fan fiction because I oh, saw like, what other people were doing. I was like a 14 year old kid, but like, you know, the fluff for Warhammer is just like ultra violent. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> my, par <laughs> my parents like saw some of the stuff I had wrote and you know, as a 14 year old kid and they're like, this is a little too much. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we want you playing Warhammer right now. So. <laughs> They actually got me the um, the Lord of the Rings game that Game Workshop was doing at the time. Oh yeah, I'm they told. Really launched it um, since, but uh, but yeah. So then I had those for a while. Um, played with my brothers mostly, but then um, then I got out of it for a while because there just you know there wasn't a community. But I was like becoming a teenager. There's other things going on, and. Uh, flash forward to like two years ago um i saw that movie fury have you seen that one yeah i've seen that good film yeah it's not bad uh, it's not bad until the very end but uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um i saw it with a buddy and uh i thought you know what maybe like i wanted to get him a gift uh because he helped me out with some stuff i was like oh i'll, I'll build him the tank from fury like a 135 scale model. And, uh, and so I did it and I was like, whoa, that was actually a ton of fun. I haven't done this in like 10 years. So I built a couple more models and then I stumbled across a, uh, a YouTube page called Wahoo Warrior. He, he does uh, bolt action. Oh, yeah, I, I know you are, And I started watching his videos and I was like, that looks like a ton of fun. He did some good battle reports, you do. I liked him. Yeah, yeah. He, and like, that's some good, like, Maybe What's that? I don't think he's made any power posts for a while. I haven't seen him pop up. I haven't seen him put a video up in a long time, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what uh, happened. Let's hope he's all right. But he uh, he totally gets the credit for getting me into bolt action. I've just been hooked ever since, and have uh, yeah, it's just been basically. Slippery. How about yourself? Um, to be fair, to be fair. It's it's um, quite similar to your story, really. Yeah. Um, I think about 10, maybe 11. Um, my nan bought me a Warhammer Fantasy Battle Starter Army. Okay. Uh, in maybe sec third edition, maybe, something like that. Hmm. Second or third. It was um, Knights of Bretonia versus Lizard Men. So she got me that because I did. I used to like doing Airfix models and kits and stuff. Yeah. And she thought, I'd put it together. But I don't think she actually realized that it was like a proper game like. So I put all that together, and me and my cousins, there was a few of us, and every Friday we stay um, over my nan's house, and we just play it, basically. 
Yeah. So that's what's dying me down the Warhammer route. Um, I think I stopped playing when some of my cousins lost interest. We used to do a lot of Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. When I came out, obviously, after the films. And um, when my cousins lost interest, and I didn't really know anyone who played it. And unless you're actually playing a game, you sort of think, you know, what's the point in it? So I basically stopped playing for years and years and years. And then about two and a half, maybe three years ago now, I thought, oh, I was in town, in our like town centre. Yeah. I thought, oh, I'll have a look at Warhammer and uh, see what models and stuff are about. And then like, it sort of got me back into it. And I started looking on Facebook and YouTube. And I didn't, I didn't realise how massive the community's gone. Mm -hmm. It's just insane. Like, it's so easy to get a game now. Well, it was. But like when I was a kid, unless you knew someone or you just turned up in a game workshop and it was on a Sunday afternoon yeah. and someone just happened to be there waiting for the game, you couldn't get a game. Because I was like, there's no forums or there was no like Facebook pages and stuff. Right. And um, I grew up at a local gaming club and I used to play 4K quite a lot. But it's never really been my favourite game. But I want to get back into fantasy, but they killed it. And they got out Age of Sigma now, but I didn't like that. Yeah. I it isn't just not for me, like so. But then I was in the um there's a place we, we play games now, is um it's called Firestorm Games and it's in Cardiff City Centre. And I was in there and I seen the game, oh action, World War Two miniatures. And I thought, oh like I've always been into history and I thought, oh that's right on my street. But again, I didn't actually know anyone who played it. Mm -hmm. But we I got talking to one of the guys who played 4K with. And he was interested in it as well, but he was the same boat as me, which he didn't know anyone who played it either. So we sort of just met and started talking about it by mistake. So we both bought a starter set, and that's, that was the uh, that was a the slope then into all this plastic stuff then. So, yeah, so pretty much the same story. But I completely stopped playing 4K after I got into boat action, and I discovered all these different historical games. Black Powder. Oh, Warlord Games does like five different five different rule sets of all sorts. Osprey does loads of historical rules. So 4K went out the window and that's so I just pure historical now. Oh, I, do, I do play Lord of the Rings, the new ones, new versions. Now and again. I haven't played it for a while, but I do like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I think that's one of the shop's best rule sets, I think. Okay. Personally. So, do you know, is it similar to the uh the older one that they had out or I remember it is a little bit. It the basics of it, I think. They changed it quite a bit because I think the guy who wrote the original Lord of the Rings, Rick Priestley, is left Game Workshop now. So I, I don't know where with all the licensing stuff now, why they can actually, if they can actually copy his game systems. I'm not sure at all, Alan. But it's a good game. I think it's better because if you remember the, the old ones, you could only release a rule book every film. Mm -hmm. And they were quite specific to that film. But the new ones are sort of like, it just covers the whole of the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So we, it's it's really good. It's worth it's worth having a go. It's really worth having a go. Yeah, so I really enjoy it. But very rarely do we play it. Not many people play it. Uh, yeah, I notice a lot of the models are even the same ones from the original one. And I, I would say, I, thought, I wish I had cool. like my the ones that I had painted as a kid. Yeah, uh, I would say like how how much things have changed. At least like with my painting and stuff, but. I think I, I sold all my Warhammer and all my Lord of the Rings stuff uh, probably probably close to 10 years ago. Um, yeah. I was trying to find if I had any photos and I looked at my email and I actually found the the emails from the eBay sales when I sold them 10 years ago, but yeah. I took the photos down. I was like, ah, oh, that was my one chance, but <laughs> gone, gone forever. Yeah, well, I still have... I I don't know how to model my Warhammer fantasy. I had quite a large elf army. And um, I'd love to see it now, what it was painted like. Because at the time, I thought it was amazing. My first ever painted army, I thought, oh, that looks amazing. But I'd love to see what it was like now. But yeah. I can't remember. I think I gave it some away, and I probably sold a bit. And it just, over time, it just all whittles away. Move house, and it just all gets lost, left in the attic and stuff. You know, so. Right. And sad, but I wish I still had it all. Yeah, for sure. Just yeah. <laughs> good memories. Yeah. I could, it looks it's probably horrific, but just the nostalgia. Man. Yeah, I even I think I just recently put on my page a uh, oh the Fury Sherman that I built, the first uh, model I built and painted in like ten or twelve years. Yeah, and uh, I don't know something as simple as like 
using a wash would have made it so much better but i just have these huge like black streaks on it of just paint trying to like weather it it's just kind but of... what i can remember when he brought they didn't they didn't have um ink which is similar but it's not quite a wash it was like black and brown ink i can remember black and brown ink citadel paints yeah. and um it's i think the games workshop washes i still use now i think they're really good I remember using the black ink specifically on uh, Minas Tirith nights. Yeah, silver and just black ink. And, it, and you, when you were a kid, it looked amazing, didn't it? Yeah. It looked good now. It might have been good. I, we'll never know. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but yeah. Especially. Go ahead. Um, oh. I think, yeah, so I primarily play bold action because uh, I'm a huge history nerd. Um, and World War II was always like my specific area of study. So, um, primarily bold action. I've got the rules for chain of command because it uses the same miniatures, but I've yeah, never. I um, I don't know. It was just like there's a there's a pretty big gaming community here in Salt Lake City, but bold action is pretty small and it's been growing. Yeah. Uh, but it was like hard enough to find people that play bold action here and chain of command is even more niche 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 than yeah, yeah. Bold action so um haven't got to play it yet i do i do have blood red skies i've got to play that a little bit it's a lot of fun and it's nice that it's like it's just a fast game um even like you don't have to worry about setup or anything really um, oh yeah no terrain really is it yeah, no terrain. You maybe some clouds, but like that's it. Yeah. Um but yeah, really just with the World War II historicals for the moment. I mean, part of it too is just like having a family, you only have so much time to yeah, get into stuff. So um I do play have you heard of a game called Gloomhaven? No. So I, I think it's like a a D and D style. Right. game um but the only reason I'm re i i play it is my brother-in-law bought it and it's like it's just a really in-depth dungeon crawl game um but it's just a fun way for us to like hang out and uh, yeah sometimes it's a game like that yeah, where you can just chuck it down and just play a game like yeah, man. I, I don't think I would ever like purchase a game like that, but he already had, and it came with everything you needed. So, uh, so it's definitely good fun. Um, but I was interested in, I mean, you painted up uh, that Confederate army. You're working mm -hmm. on Union guys right now. The Confederates look great, by the way. Oh, nice one. Uh, I think I, I told you this already, but uh, the fact that you use contrast paints on them, I was really surprised to like, how with how well they turned out because my biggest gripe with contrast paints is like you can always tell yeah you use contrast paints it's kind of obvious well it feel it felt like cheating a little bit to be honest with you yeah. because most of it was just one coat mm -hmm. and then it's basically and you you can't go back and add highlights but to be honest with you after like 60 odd confederate guys i just i thought if i highlight these i'll probably my head will go and i'll probably end up in the insane side of highlighting confederate troops which are all going to be packed into like companies you're not going to be able to see them because we're playing game but i'm not that fussy about stuff like that but I do, when when contrast paints first come out i was uh, me and a couple of boys who was playing the game and we were just saying like, i wonder if we could get him to work for historical games mm -hmm. but i I didn't want to use it for boat action because I already painted a lot of boat action. I didn't want anything to stand out completely different to my normal paint style with like acrylics and stuff. Yeah. So, oh, if I start a new project, I'll see if I can get, if I'll see if I can actually use contrast paints and how it turns out. But American Civil War, it's always, I've always been intrigued by it. And when I seen the Perry miniatures, I don't know if you know Perry miniatures, they do a lot of historical stuff. They do um, a battle in the box. Mm -hmm. which you get, um, I think it's like 120 troops, cavalry, cannons, you get um, some terrain, fences, and you actually get like a little rule book as well to play American Civil War. They're quite basic rules, but they're pretty good. 
But when I seen that and the price, I was like, it's like it's basically a bargain for what you get in it. Um, you, you can get two armies, or you can just make it as one big union or confederate army. Mm -hmm. You can do what you do any wrong with. So I decided to split it in half. And um, the problem is with games like Napoleonic style sort of fighting, which your manga Civil War was ish, is you need a lot of troops to fill out the companies and the regiments and detachments. And mm -hmm. like I don't fancy painting three hundred figures, especially both sides because i wanted to do both sides because i was the only one really interested so if someone wanted a game i've got both sides so i found some i found it was like a blog where someone had altered the rules from boat action to something called cult action which is american civil war rules yeah which is basically boat action but the little the weapons are tweaked and um, there's cannons and the rules for cannons and stuff and the unit size is a 12 per squad or per company. And when you split the Perry's box up, it fits perfectly in the unit sizes of the game, funny enough. So I've got two quite large American Civil War armies, which I could play cold action. I could play small games of Black Powder if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also got a set of rules by Osprey, uh, Rebels and Patriots. Okay. You like skirmish level games, but the unit size in here is also what I've actually built the army to. It's 12 uh, model units, so it fits perfect for these games. So it's nuts. So that's why I based them on rounds in trays. So if I wanted to put them in 24 man companies, I could just put the two trays together, and that's one unit for like black powder, yeah. but smaller skirmishy type games. Um, they can stay on the singles and I can basically do whatever I'm on them. So that's perfect. I like, I like to build armies where I can use for different rule sets. Mm -hmm. I've done quite, I've done quite a large Celt army, which is like ancient Britons. Um, I use them for Warhammer ancients, which is the old rule, which was like released in the early nineties. Um, I've used them for hail Caesar and Warlords of Herhon. Have you heard of that? I have. Yeah. Yeah, and I use them for that, but I added a mammoth and a bear and a bit more, maybe a bit more fantasy sort of like Julian, you know, like a wizard. Right. Yeah. So I like to do that. These I like to have multi multi uses. Apart from my bow action stuff, that's basically built for bow action. So it's probably my favorite game here on show. Yeah. It's probably one of the most models for at the moment. Yeah. And, uh, my my favorite game too, and I'm. I mean, I'm stuck in 28 millimeter World War II. I pretty much can't use these guys for anything else. But um, I was interested in cold action. Um, what is like, because the Civil War is obviously a lot of like firing lines and, and marching. Is that kind of implemented into the game at all? Or No, I think, I think that's one of the little shames of it. Is this not? I think if they added a little bit more um, rules for if you was in close order or lines, It'd give it a lot more, like, um, it'd be a lot more thematic. And you know what I'm trying to say? You get a lot more of that flavor of the actual conflict itself, where it's really, you can, you've got like a 360 view. But you find yourself, just because you're playing with them in the trees, you find yourself lining up together. Like, I have played the game of it with my, my son. I forced him to play a game with me, my 15 year old son. He was like, Oh, dad, I don't want to play it. Like, Oh, come on, you got the game. I just want to try it out. And then um, it's really brutal, the game. Because bow action is brutal, isn't it? To be honest, like it's quick, it's brutal, and that's what um, cold action is the same. Is um, I think if you want a bit more of a, a meaty game, a varia, you'd have to go with something like maybe black powder, yeah, or something more like where it takes a lot of time and you got it's all about frontages and facings and do you know what I mean? If you wanted that, cold action is not a game. But if you want to just put a table down, line up against each other, and just blast each other off a table, it's it's like bow action is perfect for it. Yeah. Especially the cannon. Cannons is like it reminds me of the old fantasy rules for cannons because you've sort of got to guess where you're shooting to. Okay. So basically, you've got like um, angles and you've got to guess the angle, and then you've got like I think it's a 36 inch piece of string, and where it, whatever angle you guess at, whatever that string goes through, it hits. So you can go through your own unit, you can go through two or three of theirs if they got them all lined up in column and stuff. So it's it, there's little bits to it, but I think you can always add to it because. Right. Um, I converted from 
the guy's blog into a PDF and plan on printing them out and actually getting them binded so it's like a proper rule book because it's on my laptop at the moment and I can't, I don't want to play the game and I've got to check a rule. I'm trying to fire up my laptop and trying to find the files and stuff. Right. So, um, but no, it's good. It's fast. It's fun, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, playing like two hours, you know, and the, and the two hours you could probably play each other in and once you get used to it, like, which yeah. is, you know, black powder. If you play a massive game of black powder, it could take four or five hours to play a game of black powder. It is but it'd be quite slow. <laughs> yeah, I I was interested in cold action once you I, I mean you're the only person I've seen post anything about it, but um because like I'd like to break into other areas and I keep saying like you know you only have so much time. So like if you introduce a new game and it's a whole new like yeah. set of rules to try and learn and then you gotta teach some well you gotta get somebody else interested in it and then you gotta like teach them. You know, that just takes so much time. Uh, that is a problem. So, something like Bold Action, where you more or less, like, understand the mechanics of it from Bold Action, and you can just jump into it. Yeah, there's not, there's not, there's not major massive differences. You know, you still got the dice. The dice still does the same thing as um, in Bolt Action. Um, there's a few different weapon profiles. You can get, like, carbines and um, muskets and um, smoothbore muskets and stuff. But there's not much difference. You just gives you a little bit extra range or some of them I think most of it is 18 inches to be honest with you but yeah it's, it's a good game it's a good idea like I, for, I was thinking of it when because I like to play Napoleonics more but I find a lot of the rule sets are quite boring yeah and, uh, they're quite slow and and it just takes a lot a long time to do the game and whenever you play whenever I play a game now where it's I go you go or your enemy goes you got to wait 45 minutes while they move all their troops around, and then it's your turn. I like the draw in the dice. Oh, That's like my favorite thing about board action, because you just don't know what's going to happen. Right. So any game with that in is already a winner for me. Because it does make games, it does make games a lot more interesting. Right. Yeah, I think. Anytime I hear somebody talk about bold action, that's like their favorite aspect of the rules is is the dice. It's uh, it's really good. When I uh, when I first started playing, like I didn't know anybody that war games here in Salt Lake, so I bought the Band of Brothers set. I built it up, and then was just playing the game like by myself, <laughs> uh, table in. It's not ideal to play alone, but even just like with the dice mechanic, because it's so random, it kind of works just playing it normal. Um, as long as you're honest with yourself. Um, you don't want to cheat yourself, do you? No, no. I mean, if you're like super competitive against yourself, you might need to check into a <laughs> mental institution or something. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I think like, I think something like Chain of Command is like the game I want to play because um, I'm interested in the simulation style of it, but like, yeah, I know what you mean. But, but bolt action is just so much fun. I mean, it, it's not designed to be super realistic, obviously. Um, but like the game could be, you know, you could <laughs> skin it in a uh, American Civil War and it still basically plays the same, um, you know, but it's yeah. just, it's such a solid rule set. Um, There's a core cool rule. No, it, it, it is one of the best rule sets out there. Like, yeah. Like, I think some people, some people on the boat action page and stuff, I think some people forget that it's not a purely historical game and they get a bit lost in, you know, or the uniform wearing that color in, you know, in that year in 1944 and stuff. It's like, oh, you know. Does it really matter? Like, was you, was you there? You know, because it all, just being somewhere different on the continent will affect how your uniform changes colour. Right. You know, sun, sun, dirt, salt. If you look at like a US Marines uniform after being in the Pacific Theatre for a couple of weeks, it was probably in, you know, it was probably in tatters because the, um, the jungle and stuff would probably just, would each, basically eat, eat your uniform. All the little things living in it, be nothing left there after a couple of weeks. So, I think some people need to take a, a bit of a chill sometimes. Like, 
like I get it. If you if you're really big into history and the colours and everyone got to have the same kind of buttons and stuff, I think good for you, like isn't it. But don't um, don't bring other people down because because they're not into it. Yeah. You no, know, I re- I respect people who build up um, companies of troops and stuff purely off historical units and stuff. I think it's great. But uh, I haven't got a patience for it. I just like chucking miles on the table and I'm on a bachelor. I think my early war Germans are based on. Um, I like my early war Germans are probably my favourite of my armies. Like I do like them. They got a flat eighty eight in it and a, a Panzer one. <laughs> Which is always fun. The Panzer one's great in bolt action. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it's 12, 12 shots is great. And it's like seventy, like eighty points of stuff like that. Yeah. One of the best times in the game. There's some weird things where, especially like with my bigger tanks, I find that I'm usually just using the machine guns on them instead of the main gun. Yeah. Just to kind of how the rules work. So I mean, there's some. I mean, no rule set is going to be perfect, but like, no. Just just for actual play like bold action just plays so well and um i haven't got tired of it yet i don't think i will i don't think i play enough to be able to but so is there like is there a pretty big bold action scene in your area where i am where i'm from is there's about six or seven there's about six of us the play okay. which is you know it's not massive mm-hmm. but uh, the tournament the tournament scene is pretty big like if you get to a tournament, it's always full. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the to- and not first on tournaments, most tournaments are such because it's some of the lists that are a bit, a bit silly. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there's one tournament that I've been to now two years in a row, which I would have gone this year, but I don't know what's going to happen now with all this um, coronavirus. It's called the Welsh Open, and it's um, held in Cardiff, and it's um. It's more of a friendly tournament where you can only take one a basic platoon. So you're, you're sort of forced yeah. to take normal stuff, not like an army full of like 10 flamers and, you know what I mean? and stuff like that. Like, or clean throwers, I should say. I think I saw you did a video of last year's Welsh Open that you went to. Yeah, yeah, I done a bit of an army chat, you know, just to try, try to remember what actually happened in my games. Yeah, I took early war Germans. Um, I did. I think I only won one game. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> uh, I had all regular troops, mm-hmm. and um, I was kind of things like Russian hordes and um, Japanese bamboo warrior hordes and stuff. And just, yeah, and partisans. Oh man, partisans in bow action. They got amazing rules. They mm-hmm. get to put like bombs down. Um, they can have like this one guy. He had. It was a good themed army. He was he done like um like a Jewish like partisan force. Yeah. In the partisans, you can have twenty man units yeah. with SMGs. So like twenty SMGs in a truck. Yeah. When they forty shots, it's just like what? <laughs> it just wipe squads on the table like yeah. nuts. I've but, uh, played against that army I think twice now. And yeah, it's just insane. The twenty-man unit is crazy. Yeah, um, it's way too overpowered, like for the game. Like, yeah, you got a unit of twelve regulars. It's like you got no chance. Right. <laughs> yeah, but my opponent did the same thing. He put them in the truck and then drove the truck up and just like annihilated the units. That's why you Japanese in my games. Like, um, I, I don't know if um, you've probably seen his stuff on Instagram. Um, the Beard War Gamer. Yeah. He's one of the guys who plays ball action with us. And uh, he's a really good player. And his American list is tough. Really tough. It's really good. It's really well out. Like, everything's got his own job. Mm-hmm. Like me, I don't be, be like, something I think is cool. I think, oh, i got to plan an army. Like, the Flak 88. It's, it's like 180 points plus the toe. And, you know, you could probably go, you can get a cheaper tank. Tank, which should do a better job for you, but it's a flag 88, so I'm like, why not take it in it? Right, I mean, <laughs> you actually get to throw some with it, it's a really good feeling, but it much in the games I played. Yeah, so I kind of have the same mindset, and I have I have won very few games that I've actually played. Um, yeah. 
that many. I mean, some of it is due to like trying to get people into the game, and so kind of like teaching as I'm playing with them. Well, you don't want to you don't want to get throw someone off the table in turn three. No. Trying to teach player, you know, otherwise they just lose interest. But yeah, we uh, well, we did we you we we did play once a week, but uh, we haven't really we haven't been we haven't been able to play because everything shut at the moment. So yeah. But uh, it's a good excuse to get some um, some painting done, I suppose. Yeah, I've been able to get a lot of hobby stuff done. Uh, I do miss playing. We, um, well, I actually, I ran, I ran what I think is the first bold action tournament that's gone, that's happened in Salt Lake City um, in January. And it, uh, it actually, it went really well. Um, we had 18 people show up to play. I was expecting oh. like, six to eight because that's kind of where our community has been at lately um but yeah we had 18 people show up it was um it was 800 point armies uh three games and uh it was awesome um everybody was just like like super great uh sportsmanship all, all the way around everybody had fun Every, like we didn't get any real cutthroat people um just trying to win at all costs or anything. Um, yeah. It, it kind of felt like, it's like, all right, sweet. This is going to really be the, the launching board for the community. And then kind of the, the whole coronavirus thing hit. And, and yeah, we haven't been able to meet in quite a while now. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think I've played the game now for nearly a month. Yeah. No, I've been trying to bribe my wife into playing the game. I said, maybe she won't. I made a post on the Bolt Action Facebook about like <laughs> uh, COVID nineteen challenge. Try and get your significant other to play a game of Bolt Action with you. And then I I mentioned that to my wife. Kind of it was very passive aggressive, but she just instantly shot it down. I was like, okay. <laughs> I have tried it. Gave it a shot. Yeah. She wouldn't. She had no interest. Was Fair enough. So, all right, this will be my thing. You can do your thing. Yeah, I think I'd rather like that. Yeah, you gotta have some, <laughs> some uh, not separation, but you know. Yeah, you I know what you mean. Things. It is. So you just put up your um, your chinded army. Oh yeah, my British in Burma. He's looking fantastic. Yeah, the um, Warlord Metals, the Chindis Metals, and all the best sculpts in the world, I promise you. Um, some of the faces are a little bit missing, and stuff like that. But when, once it's painted up and you sort of base it and stuff, they, they looked alike. I was glad, I'm happy, I was happy where I was. I'm, um, I hope I can get a, get a game of them soon because I've been waiting, if I may, to finish his Japanese army. Uh -huh. But I've been painting them since like October. Oh sweet! <laughs> so it takes usually takes me a while to paint an army because I get um, I don't get very much time to sit there and actually do it for about an hour or two solid. I mean, I only get um, I got like a, a bit of a setup of a desk and stuff, and whatever I'm working on, I'll just leave on my desk and then I'll pop back and forth and do like ten minutes here, ten minutes here. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all. I, that's all. I tend to paint. If I, um, I think the quickest I've ever painted an army, well, it might be the Confederates now, saying that, but um, I think it was my British Eighth Army, which is in the desert. Uh -huh. I think it took me like a month to do the Star Army set from Bolt War the Games, which is like a record for me, I think. So, because I was really, I really want, well, I bought the Eighth Army, and I made in mind bought the Africa Corps, and I'm still waiting for him to paint his Africa Corps, and I was about, that was two years ago, <laughs> so. They haven't seen much action, to be honest you? So they've been stuck in a box. Might be one of those where you're, you're going to have to paint for them or something. Well, I'm going to have to get some after the phone now. Yeah, just get your own. Yeah, so I, like, I don't mind playing against someone with an unpainted army. Like, I would never. It doesn't bother me. You know? but, there, but it is kind of. Um, uh, kills the energy a little bit when you've spent like months on on painting your force and you set it down on the table against like gray plastic. Yeah, 
I think um, if someone's working on an army and they just want to play the game, I think that's fine. But like um, the Bearded War game, when he, last year when he first started playing Boash with us, um, he bought the US, um, US Army set or whatever, or Marines, I think it might have been, and he made them all and the code them all. And then every week when he turned out to play, a little bit more of his army was painted. So every week you could see it painted and getting painted and, and you could see the progress. I think if someone turns up for a year with grey models, it's like, you know, there's no excuse now because you could just end the coat them green if you had to and just do like very minimal details and it still look good on the table. You know, from from three feet away, if you look at something, you go, oh, that looks all right, and you go up to it and you think, oh, it, you know, close up, it might not look all right. But when you're actually playing the game of it, any colour makes a massive difference, I think. And I think the colours here now, with a contrast paint, you could probably paint a lot of World War II stuff with the contrast paints. I think you could. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen Russian, and they look amazing with contrast paints because they all got grey coats on. You know, with the, with the snow base, it just looks, I think it's minimal effort. You, you have a really nice looking army. Yeah. I've seen, uh, I've seen some American armies that look really good. Actually, we had a guy bring an American army painted with contrast paints to the tournament I ran, and he ended up winning best painted um, as a consensus vote and uh, it looked great but um, yeah I was just having a conversation with somebody the other day because um, I like I I spend a lot of time on on my painting and like doing details and stuff but like but I was saying like when it's on the table and you're actually playing a game it's just a it's just a blob you know you yeah, it is. so if you just get like like even like a three color minimum um, or a super fast uh, contrast paint uh, paint scheme on there, like it's just, it's so far and above better than um, the gray plastic. Well, yeah, I understand the green. Like uh, what I like more about a game than anything is is like this when you look at a game and it's got a nice table with terrain and the armies are painted. It's very cinematic, and it, when you look, you think, oh yeah, that looks that looks amazing. And when you play, and if people see that. They're more inclined to want to get involved playing the game, because right. it's looking on a table and you see like three tiger tanks rolling across fields and stuff. It's just it looks amazing. Yeah. Well, um, have you have you played a lot of the tank wars, World of Games tank wars? I've got the book. I don't think I've played an actual armored platoon list um, or a tank war game. Um, I mean, I guess. Uh, these Japanese here will be my first uh, armored platoon. I could field a Russian armored platoon, uh, but kind of like what we were saying earlier, unless we're playing a crazy amount of points, it'll be like three tanks. <laughs> but I think I was looking at the uh, another game by Two Fat Lardies called uh, What a Tanker. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. I was wondering if maybe that would be more, uh, more something I, I'd be interested in. And as far as like just tank on tank, because one of the issues I have with bolt action, like I was saying earlier, with my tanks, I'm usually just using the machine guns. Because if you use the main gun, you're rolling one dice, and it's kind of it's not really. Um, how, yeah, wait. How I feel like like a, a tank would operate. Yeah, uh, no. But uh, but yeah, I've got the rules and everything. Um, I'm actually trying to. I'm trying to set up a uh, a 1937 game with a buddy oh. of an early war Russian platoon. Oh. I'll use these Japanese. Yeah, if you've ever heard yeah. of the open goal, I think it was 37. But um, yeah, just tons of like super light tank ads and crappy tanks. But we can have you know a have six tanks under a thousand points plus infantry and. Uh, so, Would you say the, the, the Spanish Civil War? What's that? Did you say the Spanish Civil War against with the Russian tanks against the I mean, the German tanks? No. Um, so it was like a uh, uh, Russians versus Japanese. It was a, like a border dispute. Ah, right. Yeah. Before World War II kicked off, um, but uh, but yeah, that's. That's a game I'm looking forward to. Uh, we're going to set it up once all the restrictions are lifted. Um, but he's oh, actually, cool. he's the guy that printed me these tanks, and so he's just has printed out like hordes of hordes of Russian tanks. 
Um, so that'll probably be, I think that'll be my first time playing a legit Tank Wars game. I think that's the, the only thing I don't like about Tank Wars is it, um, it doesn't feel like tank on tank battles because there's no facing values and it doesn't matter like as much. I know you get a plus one here and here, like, but I think a tank on tank game, you need a bit more to it than just rolling a couple of dice. Do you know what I mean? It gets a bit. Like, I've had a few tank games with, um, like, silly point games where my mate Adam, he's got a lot of British armor and obviously I've got a lot of German armor. So it was like, um, I think I had, um, Two Tiger Ones, a Tiger Two, a Jag Panther, and a Hummel. And he had like a couple of Churchill, some Sherman, Firefly, and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it, I think we played the game in about 40 minutes. Yeah, it's fast. Remember that? It was really fast. Because like, there's only a couple of models really on the table. And there's only so much you can actually do with a tank. But uh, I don't know if you've seen pictures. I don't know if I put pictures on Instagram of it. There's a picture of my Tiger 2, which it just, it was on it was on fire that day, like I'll be honest with you. It took out his Churchills, it took out his Fireflies, and it's just a picture of my Tiger 2 rolling through, and there's all these tanks on fire. And it just looks so cool, like on a table. But it's the only, it's the only chance I got to use my Tiger 2, because in a normal game, it's like, I don't know, it's like six points, something like that, something stupid like that. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a Yag Panther. And um, I mean, I used to have a German army and I ended up selling it, but I kept the Jag Panther because I think it's my favorite, um, favorite thing. It's something about the Jag Panther and it looks, it just looks so cool. I want a, I want a Jag Tiger, I do. Uh, I probably will get one in the future, but just not a favorite assess, just to have it in my cabinet to all my other German tanks. So I got, um, I got a few, few Stugs, a uh, Hetzer, Sturm Tiger, a Panther, a couple of Tiger Ones, Tiger Two. Sturm Tiger, Jag Panther, a uh, couple of Panzer Fours. For some reason, I got three Panzer Twos. I don't know why. I don't know why I got three Panzer Twos because they're useless. Yeah, the resin models. Yeah, the resin. Yeah, I like resin. Mm-hmm. My Tiger Twos are resin, and I think it's just the, the weight. It yeah. feels better. I think it's like Rubicon. You can't beat Rubicon kits. But, um, they're so detailed. They're amazing. Sign it. Yeah, the Rubicon kits are, are so good. I've got, um, I've got a Rubicon Sherman that I painted as a Len Lease. Well, I think it's the it's the seventy six millimeter version. Um, the kit, I mean, it's like a perfect kit. It goes together like a dream. You have all, all the extra options that you want. Um, but I did, I, I glue uh, I glue coins in the hole and in the turret because I like that one. Oh, that's a good idea, that is. Just, I don't know, it feels like a, feels like a gaming miniature, not, not a toy or something. But yeah. um, I like the resin kits too for that reason. But it kind of depends, like this little hot go for Warlord. I, it came warped, especially like the tracks. I had to do a bunch of work on that. Stuff doesn't always fit or like, um, you have these tiny little machine guns with barely a uh, barely a knob for an anchor point to glue yeah. it. And, uh, they, they can take a little more work, but. They, they do take a lot more cleaning up resin. I don't find, um, I don't find Warlord Games resin as bad as Warhammer Forge World. Heard uh, stories. Good, oh, it's terrible. I had a, I had quite a large Death Cobra Krieg army, and um, oh, the the price you pay for it, and the, the amount of cleaning up and the amount of warping, and it, it's just like oh, if you were paying that much money for the model kit, you know, you wanted to act, you expect a little bit of cleaning up to do on resin, but um, all the all the resin kits I've had, I found pretty good, Marshall, clean as well. I think you still got to do a bit of filing here and there, like and some pinning and stuff, because they're a little bit of a bugger to glue together as well, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, most of the kits just like just some basic hobby skill. You can you can fix any of them. I've got a Soviet IS two. It's um, it's one of those Italian kits that Warlord um, upscaled for bolt action. Yeah. And I mean, those ones aren't my favorite, but 
the IS2 in particular, like the turret, um, again, just is, is super flimsy, has some, it's real difficult to put together. Um, but you just have some basic hobby skills and it's not a problem. And then it looks great when it's put together and, and painted on the table. So I guess it just, I think it depends on like how much effort you want to put into your models. But yeah. I, th I don't think, I don't think you're going to have a finish. You could never finish a model or an army. Can you, you can always add some into it. So like, I think sometimes you just got to just, you gotta sort of try and draw the line somewhere because you'll just keep working on it forever. Yeah. You know, I've got I've got an American Airborne Army that some of my some of the minis in it are like the first ones I painted two years ago, and then some of them are are ones I two weeks. Ago. So there's a, there's a funny difference between the quality. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't think I would go back and. And bring the old ones up to speed. I just have other things I want to work on. So that's the thing. I I look at my um my first even my first bolt action step was only like two years ago now, and I can see the difference. It's and I think oh, do I really want to sit there and go over them all? Like I think oh, no, I don't like. It. I mean, I don't want to sit in the paint another paint another sixty here infantry. I just I just don't want to do it. So they're good enough for gaming. I'm I'm always I'm always excited about like the next project I have, so <laughs> I I've done this multiple times where I start something new and I'm like all right this one I'm gonna I'm gonna really take my time on and make it excellent and then you know I get halfway through and I'm like all right I just want this to be done because oh I have more models to paint like I got the next thing that I'm excited about so uh, I I think I think that's the curse of a war game isn't it I think I think we're all afflicted with that. <laughs> That disease. I done the same with my with my uh, Magnus of War stuff. I said I'm not going to do anything else now until I finish this whole box is painted. And I think since then I think I bought three Charby ones. I think I've done Black Seas um, like ships. I've done Panzer Fours. I've done all sorts in between. But I think I think sometimes I think it's good to have a little bit of a break from one army and maybe just work on something different because it. You do get a little bit, you do get a little bit, you know, get fed up of painting the same thing over and over again. That's why I'd love Napoleonics is probably my favorite era of gaming. But painting up 100, 200 of the same guys with all their buttons and all their frills and all their straps, it's just like, you know, I think that my long term project is Napoleonics. I've got quite a bit of French painted up now. I always end up um, on the, the bad side, from a British perspective, in games. <laughs> I'm either French, German, <laughs> because everyone wants to be British. Yeah. Yeah, we have a, well, I mean, just in our little community, it's almost all Americans. And I think a lot of it starts as like, people get the Band of Brothers box, and then they just build off that. Uh, yeah. That's exactly what I did. Uh, so I totally get it, but um, yeah, we just we have too many too many American armies for sure. Try to you know, break the mold. Yeah, I try to go try to go with some weird stuff. Like I've got these uh, my Romanian army. Oh, nice! It's pretty unique, uh, and I've actually I've done it all um, with miniatures from Great Escape Games. I don't know if you've they, seen. Yeah, they do good stuff. They do they? Is super quality. Um, but I've also jumped on uh, the all metal bandwagon, so all my infantry is metal. Uh, for my Romanian army, my my U.S. paratroopers. I started with the Band of Brothers box, and then sold all the plastic paratroopers, and now my entire army is metal. Um, and then all my Japanese are going to be metal, metal infantry. What, what do you keep all your models in? Do you have a display cabinet or do you just, are they in like cases or? I don't have a cabinet. I don't have a huge hobby area at the moment. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah. I got Romanians up there and then my uh, Americans, Americans below. And then I've got some like tanks and stuff just around, but um, 
uh, once like we're planning to uh, to look for a new home pretty soon, and I think once I get more space, I want to get like a actual display cabinet. Um, I've actually I've got a plastic Russian army that's in my garage, just in a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, I like your setup. It's nice. It's a good setup though. I've slowly started encroaching on everyone else's space now with my stuff. I started off with a desk with my laptop and stuff on. And I so oh, can I put some shelves up? So I want to put some books on it. Yeah, no, you do that. Oh, can I get one cabinet to put some stuff in? Yeah, you're going in. Can I get another cabinet to put some? Yeah. And all of a sudden, now I'm taking up like a quarter of the baby's clean room now. We just, I'll, I'll, give, I'll show you now. I'll show you. Oh, 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 oh. Right, so I don't know if you can see it properly. But uh, I got books, um, some Indians, uh, dwarfs, and then is my uh, German tanks. Some more German stuff. A bit of everything, like. And then uh, my my shelf of things I don't want a baby to get. So there's all sorts going on. And then I got another cabinet then. Uh, my chin dips. Uh, my confederates. And then my union troops, which will, well, it will be in there when it's all painted. And then right on the bottom, there's Zulus, uh, British line infantry for the Anglo-Zulu War, uh, War of the Roses stuff, and some Rohan. So... It's a bit of a mix. Yeah, good variety. Yeah, those cases are beautiful. Um, don't really have the room for those right now. I'm in in our guest room. <laughs> uh, I've just got this corner, but um, yeah, I want the cases because I like how you had uh, the photo in your chindit section, but I kind of have the same thing going on. Like I've got it. Yeah, I noticed that. That's, so that's really cool, that is. The newspaper from my hometown uh, from just after World War II. Uh, yeah, my great grandmother's, um, and then I've got uh, my wife's uh, grandparents both served, so I got their photos, and I kind of like the the memorabilia collection to go with uh, my bold action armies, like as a display. I think super cool. Yeah. Well, that's why I done the chindits. Um, my great grandfather was in Burma. So I sort of done them, and like it's a bit of a um, bit of a shout out to him, like you know, because they they went through some shit, didn't they? To be honest, yeah. you know. I think we got it pretty easy. All we got to do is stay in and watch telly. You know, <laughs> we haven't got to get shipped halfway across the world and to fight someone you don't even know, like. So I think we got it pretty good. For sure, if we have to stay home and paint miniatures, and that's the hardest thing we get through. I'm, I'm willing. I'm willing to take the sacrifice to stay home and paint miniatures. Taking one for the team. Taking one for the team. For king and country. King and country, there you go. <laughs> we said for America. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. yeah, I've got um, my my wife's grandfather served in the um, I think they were combat engineers. Uh, yeah. Look on them super cool it's like it's their history um but they were like they were naval they were part of the army but they would land on the beaches army amphibian engineers so that'll probably be a, a project at some point um to get them done and then i have a uh, i have a great uncle I, um who uh served in the uh the canadian armored forces in the war oh yeah yeah so so that that might be a project too because i like i really like being able to base the things i do on uh well sometimes movies but like especially if you can do family or something it just makes it that more uh special it's personal isn't it yeah the, that's the word i'm looking for personal so yeah man, I, I, I like well i try and i'd like to research the family back and see uh you know where actually how far back you can actually get because some people have gone back to like like the 17th century like it's nuts <laughs> i think i think our, in my family probably always been peasants i don't think they've ever been uh the gentry yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I need to do one of those ancestry things one of those tests. Well, 
I also play Xbox with a guy. I can't. I think he's from Florida, right? And he done like this uh, genealogy thing with like a DNA thing, and it tells you um, where in the world you're from. And he was surprised that he was mostly North European. He said, "Why are you surprised at that?" He said, "Oh, I didn't think." I was like, "Well, most white people come from North Europe, so like Britain, France, Spain at the push." I was like, "Why well, you surprised? You're American. You're from well, your ancestors are more." More than likely from North Europe, you know, basically France, France or Britain, really. Bloody, bloody colonists! <laughs> How dare you? Well, on my dad's side, my like my dad's family comes from Germany, but I don't know about my mom's side. So I'd have to, I'd have to look into that. But it'd be fun to look at. Oh yeah, I, don't, I know most of mine is. Um, Irish, so. Well, man, I, I've got I've got maybe 10, 15 minutes left. Um, I was wondering about your uh, your different pages. So, like, you've got you've got the YouTube, um, or gamer YouTube, uh, your Instagram handle, and then you're doing a face group, Facebook group too, right? Yeah. Well. The Facebook one is basically put my pictures on it so I don't have to have them on my phone to save the memory. That's the idea behind that. And I started the YouTube one because um, me and my other, my other mate who I played ball action with, we're supposed to do it together and do videos together and uh, maybe battle report and stuff like that. But um, he never really did anything, so I sort of just tied it on my own, basically. Yeah. Um, I'm not looking to make any big of it. I don't know. I enjoy doing the videos. I, I enjoy. There's a bit of a good. There's a good community on YouTube. Yeah. You know, I got a. I think I probably. Got, I probably subscribe to about three hundred people, and I like to watch stuff while I'm painting, or like watch, slash listen, mostly listening. Yeah. But um, there's some good YouTubers out there. Like, so, yeah. I now, I do video. I, I'd like to do more battle reports because some some of the games we have are really good, but it's just it's a lot of effort to. Uh, Try and play and video and make sure you're getting everything in. Like, do you mean? So I like to watch when people are watching a battle report. I like to watch people actually rolling dice. I know it sounds weird, like, but I like to see the dice rolls and see what actually comes out of it. Like, not just a turn by turn thing. So and then two hours of two hours of video then you. So it's uh, but um, yeah, my Instagram. I don't know. Um, it's probably the same as Facebook, just about pictures on. Like, I like looking at other people's stuff. Right. I like it years and stuff like that and if i if i'm interested in a certain period i like to look what other people are painting and then before i actually start it myself because i've been looking at um doing some english civil war as well it's um the round heads and the cavaliers so i'll be looking at doing that but that's sort of the same sort of thing as mega civil war you need a lot of a lot of troops so at the moment i don't think i'm gonna i, I don't want to paint another massive army of blocks of soldiers up like but um i think my next project after this would be french world war ii okay. yeah just char ones i want to char b ones in it um i want to char 2c as well which is one of the biggest tanks that was ever employed during world war ii um i don't know i think the, i think the french i think the french in world war ii got a bit of a bad name in it because they they got steamrolled a little bit yeah. but i think the Put up a good fight within itself. I think it's just, I think more of the government surrendered more than the actual French army. There's a lot of French actually escaped to Britain via Dunkirk with the British and ended up fighting, or well, they stayed in France and like formed guerrilla groups and actually just kept fighting. But then some French, they joined the German army, yeah. which is your SS Charlemagne, which is made up of French because they, they were fighting against Bolshevism or communism. So it's, it's, when you get into World War Two, it's oh, you can get lost in it because it's just it's just mental. So common. You know, it is so complicated. And then they get one of the things I've like kind of experienced is um, always focus on World War Two, uh, like in my studies and stuff. Um, have you ever heard of the podcast Hardcore History? Yeah, I listen. I I listen to that. Well, I've listened to everything he's done so far. So yeah, me too. I I've been through most of his stuff a couple times. Um, a lot of the work I do, I, I get to just have headphones in and, um, 
but his series on the first world war was kind of like my real introduction to the first world war and when you even understand like the basic concepts around that it just may, it, like helps you to understand why why france fell so fast in the second world war um and kind of you know like you were just talking about they feel like they were fighting against uh bolshevism and communism and all that makes so much more sense when you you know like how everything leads up to that moment yeah well if it, if it weren't for world war one and, and i'll say germany was treated after world war one you might not have had a world war two if the french weren't so harsh on germany you, you wouldn't have had that extremism because i think extremism is um it becomes more popular if people are in struggling and germany after world war one was like a was bankrupt and it was like you know economic crashes and everyone was like jobless and starving and god knows what so then extremism is, becomes if someone stands in front of you and saying oh i'm gonna get your jobs back and i'm gonna give you this and give you that they're all gonna go marching happy behind you most of the time yeah so i think to understand world two i've got to look a little bit world War one because um i think well the british and the french basically done the same thing in world War two they've done in world War one straight the uh, straight to Belgium, dug in along Belgium, but this time the Germans went around them and not through Belgium. So we're mostly there anyway. So yeah, it is it's all interesting and everyone got their own point of view on it. But um like when you're playing games, like you don't really want to get involved in the politics and stuff. Because you know, you can get some people still get upset about stuff and that stuff. So. But I think if you're gonna play historical games, I think you've got to be able to you've got to play these armies you might not feel comfortable with playing. Like I people go on about the Germany and you don't want to see swastikas on tanks and that's like yeah I understand but then shouldn't you feel the same about seeing the ham um the southern the sickle or whatever it's called with the communist flag because they were just as well just as bad they were Stalin was uh, just as bad as Hitler maybe worse in some cases because he was doing it a lot longer so you know I think sometimes you've got to have a bit of a thick skin when playing historical games because mm -hmm. whatever army you look in whatever country you look in We've all got that. Every country got a dark past, you know. Especially Britain, especially France, Germany, Bel even Belgium. Belgium in Africa. If you want to look, if you want to Google it, I think it was King Leopold. Oh, he was a nightmare in Africa. You wouldn't think it, but he was a. Um, I don't want to swear, but he's a bit of a bugger. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so but I think every country got a dark, dark past. So you know, sometimes. It, well, that's what makes history. It's happened, isn't it? There's nothing you can do about it. So we get some, we get some good games out of it, I suppose. Yeah, I, I guess rules. I I'm of the opinion that like if it was there, then I like no problem with you playing it. If someone wants to play like Waffen SS or yeah, like you said, I mean the communists were horrible. Japanese were horrible. Oh, yeah, Japanese are terrible. If there's a way to like you know, it's history and it's important to learn. Uh, you know why those things happened and um like the motivations behind everything and the whole idea of learning history is that you don't repeat the mistakes yeah and so i, I think especially in wargaming you get those units on the table because they were there um they can be interesting to you even if they're they did horrible things but you don't like you don't have to glorify them you no. know putting it painting them putting them on a table playing them doesn't glorify what they did Like, um, I've got quite a big German army because when we started playing ball action, my mate wanted to be Britain. So it was either, basically, you got to go Germany because there's no one else, there's no one else, you can go do the British was basically fighting the most. So that's how I ended up German army. Anyway, because I, I play, um, I play World of Tanks and like War Thunder. And I've always been into like the German big cats because obviously they just, it's all that thing around them, minute. It's all... So they look, it's all like shrouded in like um, mystery about tigers and stuff. I mean, but in re real life, they weren't that good, but in games, they're good. So I, I was happy going to gym, and so then I could just get an excuse to paint a load of tigers up or panthers up. Yeah. But I'd like to do a drama platoon um, of maybe Churchill's. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with the M4. I think a proper British tank would be the Churchill tank. Yeah. Churchill's and Cromwell's. And Churchill, Cromwell's. Maybe throw a comet in. Yeah. A bit of late, you know, like, yeah. So yeah, so uh, I've enjoyed chatting to you, mate. I'll be honest with you.
it's been um, it's a good idea on your part of doing this. Yeah. And it'd be nice to see you doing it with some other people, some more interesting people as well. <laughs> you're a long people older than me. <laughs> this is cool. yeah, um, I will I'll fin I'll finish these one day maybe. Yeah. That's what I've done so far, I know. So it's a little bit of progress, a bit of base colours down like you know. Amount of progress. I I thought I could I could uh multitask a little bit better, but if I'm having an actual conversation, I'm not painting as much. But I think I mean you're not gonna be able to see. No, I can see it. Oh man, but I think I'm pretty much done. I think I got a spray layer of uh flat varnish and then it'll probably be up on my Instagram tomorrow. So oh, look forward to it, man. um but yeah, dude, this has been awesome. Uh yeah. thank you for uh for taking the time to do this and no, it's good to meet you because so i've seen your post for a while now and i've seen your post on the boat action page and stuff and then um, the boat action meme page as well which is funny i've never been a meme guy until uh well really like my kid was born i just have tons of time or i'm just holding her and i'm on my phone making memes i've got some i've got some bold action stuff i could probably put up there <laughs> yeah i hope i hope to be able to like uh do this with some more people, especially while we're all in lockdown. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, even over over like Facebook and stuff, there is a really good community and yeah. support, support each other. So could actually get like a face to face over the internet meeting, you know? Yeah. Well, most of war game is about interaction with someone else, isn't it? I mean, especially a lot of people now are just isolating or on lockdown and stuff. So this is a good way of actually just talking about the game. Yeah. I mean, face to face. Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. been good, man. I enjoyed it. It's nice to meet you anyway. Nice to meet you too, man. Thank you so much. And uh so you are the Welsh War Gamer. You're on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. All under all under Welsh War Gamer, right? I think my I think my YouTube is Welsh War Gaming. Okay. So I think it's it's basically the same. If you look for the like it's like a gold dragon. Because uh yeah, that's the like the flag of Wales, oh, it's a red dragon. But if anyone from Wales does an account, they always use the red dragon. But um, you can use a gold dragon as well. So I use the gold dragon, trying to be a little bit different. There you go. Okay. I saw your like, oh, maybe I should make some kind of logo or something for mine because I haven't done that yet. But mine's a bit lazy because it's just a picture of a, of a, it's a cut out of a flag basically. But some people, I like, um, some people have made some really cool ones. But I like yours, it's just the guy with a gun, which is. That's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. you know, that's what it's about. So it just lets people know what you're about. But um, cool man. Thanks again for chatting, and uh, oh, yeah. looking forward to seeing uh, your future projects. Oh, nice one. Stay safe. Thank you, man. We'll talk later. Good, mate. <laughs>